What is going on Stonebladers? And finally, there is a new Stoneblade deck in the house featuring your favorite, the Fairy Time Raveler. Aside from that, I made a few changes, not too many. I'd say normally if I was uh, playing this how I maximum wanted it to be, I didn't feel like buying another Teferi. I'd probably have two Teferi, one Narset, as opposed to two and one. Uh, I just didn't feel like spending another 40 bucks or so on them. But either way, here's the updated list. Everything is going to be the same except a few changes. So I still have uh, 21 lands. Uh, like I said, probably one more minor tweak. I'd take out an Aired Mesa and maybe put in one Prismatic Vista. You know, that helps uh, to get my basic lands better. You don't want to use too many Prismatic Vistas when you're looking to fetch for duels, which is why I like having these, because all of my duels right now fetch for Tundra and Volcanic Island, uh, which is always a really good thing. This is going to be all completely the same. This is all completely the same. I took out one back to basics and I put it in the sideboard, okay? And before I had a um, Blue Blast, I took that out. I don't really care too much about playing against red cards. I mean, it's good to get red blast. It's good to get some random, you know, Chandra plane walkers, uh, planes walkers, uh, a few other cards. But all in all, I don't need that much help when it comes to red cards. Doc Faden is another good one. Uh, but either way, so I took that out and that allowed me to put Teferi in to the main deck. Everything else is going to be the same there. And I've always been on, ever since I've been playing Stoneblade Online, I've had two Disenchants, and by two Disenchants, I mean one Disenchant and one Nature's Chant. I actually took out Nature's Chant and I replaced it with an Engineered Explosives. And the reason I had two Disenchant effects is pretty much because I wanted to help with hate cards, most specifically Chalice of the Void and Choke. However, I noticed that I'm not really losing to those cards at all. And while Disenchant is great because it's an instant, it has synergy with Snapcaster, uh, it kills equipment, I realized that Engineered Explosives is just simply a card that comes in many more uh, decks, many more games, plus the fact that I'm playing Valk means I have the ability to toggle between two and three. Uh, creature decks, it's awesome. Stoneblade isn't great when it comes to getting, you know, tons of value and getting two for ones, three for ones, and all that other great stuff. If you're playing Supreme Verdict, you might be able to get away with that. Engineered Explosives is a card of people don't really expect from you nowadays. It can take out two chalices, it can take out multiple creatures, uh, and a lot of cool things. So I think if you play well with that card and people don't see it coming, you can do a lot of uh, significant damage, so to speak, when it comes to your matches and games. Uh, plus, you know, I'm just willing to test it out as always. So this is pretty much where I want it to be right now, aside from maybe two Teferis and one Narset and maybe a Prismatic Vista. This is pretty much what I would roll with. I love uh, everything I'm seeing here. And then one more thing. Okay, so maybe it's not everything. I would take out one Surgical. I have not seen much Graveyard uh, combo stuff. Uh, maybe you would go to a Relic or Progenitus, maybe something that is still Graveyard Hate related. Uh, I like Relic because it allows you to, you know, pick away at your opponent's Graveyard. And even if it's not showing any value, you can obviously pop it and it cantrips. Yes, it's going to shut off your Graveyard, but just adjust accordingly as always. So this is the brand new 75 that I am very excited to play with. In fact, I played six matches and I went five and one. Uh, I lost to an 80 card... Uh, 17 color Yorion. <laughs> it was funny because like half of the cards in there I had never even seen before, so I didn't know what to expect. That deck was pretty much just all planeswalkers and a lot of planeswalkers and more planeswalkers. It was pretty hard to deal with, uh, but aside from that, I'm not too worried about that. It was a deck I had never seen before specifically. But then again, how often do you see Yorion similar decks because there's just so many different cards being thrown in there. With all that being said, let's move to the first match we have here. Uh, against a nice opponent using the new and improved uh, UW and parentheses R Stoneblade. So we got blue, white, red Stoneblade. So here we are on the draw against Rug Delver. Now on the draw against any type of Delver can be quite challenging, especially if they get a good setup. They got days to protect their cards and so on and so forth. I am on the draw. Having a batter skull a lot of times is like, you know, just doing a mulligan. I like this though because at least I can play it. I have mana, turn two, I can spell snare, I can always use Stoneforge. Yes, it's not gonna be great against combo, but uh, this hand is playable. It's not the greatest in the world, but I still wouldn't want to mulligan it just to keep the seven cards and have card advantage for being on the draw. So I kept this. And opponent kept seven as well. Okay, drop nothing. Okay, so. 
please don't tell me <laughs> that you would play an island and ponder here, okay? Uh, if they're not doing anything on one, then there's a good chance that they might be doing something on turn two. This happens a lot with Stoneblade. One of the best strategies that I can sum down in a few steps when it comes to this deck is prevent whatever the hell they're doing in the first few turns, don't die, and then land and protect your haymakers. This deck has a lot of haymakers now. The fact we got Teferi, we've got Narset, uh, we've got True Name. You could consider that a haymaker, depends on you know who you're playing against. Uh, you have obviously Stoneforge, which is kind of a, a two mana haymaker, depending on who you're playing against. You got back to basics, which can be backbreaking. And of course, then you have Jace. So it's good to kind of keep the board uh, to a minimal as possible. So here I am just playing Island. I don't want to play this because I want to save these for, say, maybe playing Ponder, taking the card off the top and shuffling. Or if I get a Brainstorm, I don't. I would rather play an island and have them maybe, you know, guess what I'm playing rather than playing a flooded strand and being like, okay, this person could be on uh, a bunch of different decks. Sure. Okay, so they're not playing a two drop here, which is fine. So here, uh, here I do want to ponder. I want to see what else I can get. Uh, right now, they could actually be Storm, right? They do play Tropical, so it, it could be quite a few things. So perhaps more Counter Magic, a Force of Will, or, but let's see where we're at with Ponder first. Okay, so Counter Spell isn't all that bad. Uh, what we can do here, I'm going to want Counter Spell. Obviously, I can't play it, so it'd probably be something like uh, Planes, Island, and Counter Spell, or Planes. Uh, counterspell island it really depends on who i thought i was up against like if i thought i was playing against storm i'm gonna want to hide the counterspell away from uh discard either way i didn't do that so let's do this in fact that's probably the better play because that way i can at least shuffle away uh the extra land three lands not that bad uh, i can always draw more in the future and this is good the fact that they're fetching means they probably have something to play for two uh, and despite the fact they do play days, uh, I don't play spell snare like not around days. Like I'm not gonna not crack this and be like, oh, they could have days. Uh, if they do, they do. That's fine. Sometimes what you can do is actually not play a ponder and then keep your spell snare up if you really want to play around days. But even if they do days, I'm completely fine with it. That's good. So I'm guessing they do not have one, which is always good news. Okay, I believe I played a flooded strand here and did nothing. So they could play Oko, they could play True Name, they could play any creature. Um, I wanted to see what they had to play. And I did want to counter this, uh, simply because eventually that's going to be flying. And right now I don't have any removal. I haven't seen any removal. So uh, that was the reason why I didn't play a Stoneforge there, is to kind of help control the board. They didn't have a Daze before, not like having a Daze now would help. They also didn't have a Force of Will. I'm not sure if they would have previously, but um, either they haven't and they don't want to use it, or they're just fine trading one for one, which is probably the case if they do have a force of will. Okay, that's not bad. So <clears throat> here it's going to be play island, crack for planes, play Stoneforge. I could keep up Snapcaster and uh, for a spell snare or a counter spell. Here I want to start getting on the attack. I do have a uh, Force of Will backup, which is another reason why uh, I'm more likely to make that play. So maybe they actually thought I got JIT. I thought about it for eight seconds. All right, that's cool. That's card advantage. True name, we definitely want to force this because uh, this is going to be 3-3 three, three soon. And when this comes in play, that would be six points of damage each turn. So force pitching Stoneforge very easily. Uh, and they have one themselves, apparently. <clears throat> they pitch Brainstorm. So not much we can do about that. We are now going to be up against two 3-3s three, that are very hard to remove. Sure. They only have only one card in their hand, which is good. Okay. Stoneforge, obviously. I believe I just shuffled here anyway. And so what I want to do here is play my island and then play JIT. Uh, the reason for that is because if I don't play my island, they can daze that. And right now, um, 
I'm on my back foot. I pretty much need to get my equipment. I need to use my mana. I'm not worried about like hiding stuff in my hand at this point. Uh, eventually, I just need to get this batter skull in. And having this jit out right now is going to allow me to properly use my mana so I won't need to later. Because after I need to bring in batter skull, I want to make sure that uh, I don't, you know, end up regretting that later. Especially if they play a Delver and I don't even have it out. You know, I need to put the counters on it to be able to kill it. Right now, I can't touch these, but. Uh, obviously things can change as the game moves on okay so they played a land which probably means they drew nothing thank you for the information if they had a bolt they'd use it here if they had removal they'd use it here it appears they don't Ooh, this is really good so i wanted to make sure i counted my land so we have one two three four five that means three for Narset and two for the Batter Skull activation. So let's do Island, Island, Island. Uh, obviously, you don't want to tap your planes here. Otherwise, uh, you probably lose the game. Let's use this. Uh, this is an interesting one. So right now, despite the fact Councils is great against both of these, I still don't have a plane. So I'd have to wait around for that. <coughs> Swords, um, not bad, even though I can't use it. I could always use it on myself to gain life if I needed to. Brainstorm, I'm not too crazy about, given the fact I'm going to be bringing this in and then I would have one other card in my hand. Plus, I mean, I could get a Brainstorm and then use this to shuffle. But overall, I like Swords in case they play a Delver or if I need to plow my own guy uh, in order to gain life. Because this right here is six. And, uh... okay, so once again, they played a land. So they have one card in their hand. And we are immediately bringing in Batter Skull because <clears throat> we need to block in order to gain life and preserve our health because our health, yeah, our life total. Did I just say health as if, do they call it health? Anyway, I don't know. It's been a long day. So <laughs> let's bring this in. We need to block in order to gain life. So by this uh, exchange right here, I'll actually be gaining one. Well, I gain four and then I take three. So this exchange actually allows me to gain one life. So apparently they drew that lightning bolt one turn too late. Okay, so what they wanted to do here, I was going to block, then they're going to bolt this. I'm still going to gain life, but this is pretty much just uh, killing the germ token. Not the greatest play in the world, if you ask me. I mean, obviously I have, let's see, one, two, three, four. I have the mana to equip it, so they probably could have bolted Narset. That would have been a better one. Um, I don't want to brainstorm here because if I don't hit a land, I can't equip this and they have no cards in there and see what i mean like they played both of these lands it would have made my life so much more difficult if they had these two sitting in their hand then i had to guess i'm like do they have this do i have to play around this card now i have perfect information it makes my life so much easier that's another big reason why i just don't want to uh, aimlessly play out your lands when you don't need to so uh, another interesting spot ponder i don't care for then it's force of will and jace I don't want to play Jace right now. I just want to attach Batter Skull and get in so I can increase my life. Next turn, I can attach Jit to it. Then we can pretty much stare at each other and look for other things. But in the meantime, I want Force of Will simply because I want to be able to counter if they have anything that I need to counter, say maybe another True Name or uh, another maybe Nimble Mongoose. Actually, that wouldn't be a big deal. But uh, I just wanted Force of Will for backup because playing Jace right now isn't the greatest of ideas. Let's equip this attack that's that okay, they're thinning and they don't want to kill nurse it cool so now we can stare at each other all right back to basics while this um this card is interesting against them. Despite the fact they play all non-basic lands, I've never really liked Back to Basics against Delver. Here, I do want to brainstorm. Uh, I'm looking for some action, maybe a Plans of Council's Judgment. Uh, a True Name would be awesome, just so I can get through this, because right now, nothing's going to happen. Uh, so let's check out Brainstorm. Hit a few interesting cards. So I believe here, uh, I want that, and I think what I put back was going to be one of these three here i don't remember exactly but i think i wanted to play a land so it might have been like brainstorm and ponder brainstorm so it was brainstorm and the other card that was over there i forgot anyway play land and i didn't equip in case i want a, a hard cast force of will Okay, so that tell me, tells me that they probably drew either some type of ponder or brainstorm, something that's going to allow them to draw cards. 
Okay, they did. Now, they could be sitting on a daze um, or a spell pierce or something else that they're not playing. Uh, they've been playing out their land, so because of that, I actually chose to um, pitch back to basics to this just in case they did have some type of spell pierce or daze. I at least still have a ponder here, which is good. Okay, so what I want to do here is ponder. And this is great. So I already have a swords. That's going to go on the bottom. Next is going to be brainstorm on top of that and then true name on top of that. So very important here. What I want to do is play this first, okay, and then equip this. If I equip this first, that means I have three mana open and then this plays into days. So what I want to do here is tap three, play that, and now equip Jit to Stoneforge. Now we can attack and they can see, okay? So that plays around days that way just to make sure. However, probably uh, a really good opponent, if they had days there, they might even daze your true name just so that you have to pay it and you can't at least equip uh, JIT that turn just to kind of, you know, get an extra turn and preserve some counters. Uh, when you're back against the wall like that, uh, sometimes that's what you have to do. And even for the fact of the matter that I was in a similar position where it was true name and nimble mongoose against an open board where I just had Stoneforge in my equipment. Regardless though, we got through, we turned it around and we still ended up winning with a nice 12 life. Pretty sweet, right? So let's go to the sideboarding and we'll talk about what changes we need to make going against Rug Delver on the draw again. Okay, so first and foremost, cards that I like from the sideboard. I do like explosives. Um, I like Force of Negation simply because they're probably going to have Oko. Uh, click at least trades with Delver. That's not that bad. Uh, don't want any of those. Uh, Red Blast, if you want a Kamikaze or Valk, you can play those. I do like Spell Snare. I do like Path. And I think I liked Fluster. Uh, a lot of people think Fluster is bad against Delver matchups, but from all of the matchups that I've ever played, it usually comes down to Force of Wills, winning Counter Wars, plus they might even have Veil of Summer. This is a great counter to Veil of Summer. This is a great counter to Force of Will, Force of Negation. So I really like that. I think it depends on how much room you're going to have in your deck. Okay, so let's move these over here. And let's move these over here. Cool. Let's check out what we don't want slash what we don't need. First and foremost, I actually kept 21 lands. Um, like I said, the fact that I'm bringing in engineered explosives means uh, I can always crack this for a Valk should I need it. Okay, first thing I do want to take out uh, back to basics. That's not going to be needed. Actually, let me, yeah, that's fine. Jace is just too much mana. Uh, not wanting to play that. Narsets are good. Teferi is good. Uh, I think I took out one, maybe two Force of Wills, or actually I might have even just taken out Force of Negation. I think Force of Will is overall better given the fact that they have a lot of creatures. Okay, so it might have been like that. And then let's see, Pierce. Uh, I think I kept in Pierce simply because if they do have Oko, uh, that can hit that. It can hit, you know, early cantrips if I need. And then I might have taken this out simply because I have more cards in my deck now that just go pretty well against this. Let's see what we have here. Oops, I just forgot to take out those cards. So there was that, it was that, it was that, and I think we had one more. I want removal, so that's good, that's good, that's good. Click, and then I think I took out, what am I, on the draw? I think I took out a ponder because I wanted everything else there. So uh, that's pretty much what I ended up using against Rug Delver on the play. Uh, force wills are fine, like I said, if I need to uh, counter something, I can. Uh, possibly I could take out a force of will and change that with a fluster storm. In fact, I might have done that. I don't remember for sure. It changes all the time depending on the card you see and just what you feel like playing. But uh, uh, I don't have a solid sideboard, but pretty much very similar to that. So let's go to game number two. All right, I actually really like this hand. First and foremost, I have land. I have lots of it. Next, I have a swords, which is awesome. It's removal. Next, I have brainstorm, which goes perfectly with fetch lands to draw three, remove crap I don't want, and then to make things even better, true name is great once it's on board. Uh, they pretty much can't kill it that I'm aware of or cards that they play, uh, unless I don't think they're playing black, so they're not playing Plague Engineer. And Narset, depending on when you play it, can be very helpful when it comes to stopping them from drawing cards and so on and so forth. But either way, I like this hand. We're keeping it. We're good to go. Let's rock and roll. Nothing, okay? So right now it's looking at Polluted Delta Go. I do want to be able to set up, yep, 
Uh, and throughout this game, I was constantly pondering to myself if they play Stifle or not. I wasn't sure. I hadn't seen one yet, depending on like the version of you know the deck that they're going to be playing. Uh, right here, once again, I want to set up for a Brainstorm Shuffle, even though I have a really good hand. And the reason I did this is because if they do have a Stifle, that means they're going to have to waste their fetch, you know, and then do their Brainstorm. That means they would have to draw another fetch to uh, get rid of those cards that they didn't need. So this is kind of a Stifle check, which they didn't have. That's good. So let's Brainstorm now because they don't have mana open. They can daze this, but I can obviously pay it. So that wouldn't be a good play for them. Let's look at her cards. We got all our land over here. And these cards over here. So right now, uh, in terms of land, I have blue, white, and then I have blue, white. So I probably got one, uh, rid of one of the lands. I'd probably say it's a plains and then either a brainstorm or a ponder, or it was, I think two, I think I got rid of two of the lands here. It's hard to say. So I either kept four lands total or I didn't shuffle, but uh, having lands against this deck is definitely a good thing. So I think it might have been like planes and another card. Let's see. So brainstorm is definitely something I would get rid of. Okay, that's fine. And I might not have cracked. Let's see. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I take that back. Okay, yeah, that's fine. But now I have blue, blue, white, white. And they play nothing. This is really good. Okay, so... Uh, this deck trying to go the distance and like extend it out is not the best strategy in the world. I understand some Delver decks can be more mid-rangey. Uh, probably the only deck that's better mid-rangey, in my opinion, is going to be these 17 color Yorian decks just because they pack so many ridiculous cards and card drawing. Uh, Stoneblade can certainly grind with the best of them, whether that be regular uh, Miracles or all, the, all these other control decks like Grixis Control if it's not even around anymore, but... Uh, this is good as long as I keep hitting lands and I keep drawing good cards. I am in no hurry to play anything, so uh, here I wanted to ponder. Uh, and this is really good too. So I do already have a true name, so it's probably going to be true name on the bottom. And then I think Teferi and Polluted Delta. Or uh, Polluted Delta Teferi. Yep, okay. Because I wasn't planning on shuffling anyway, so that didn't matter too much. And if they wanted to wasteland my Polluted Delta, I would be fine with that. I would just fetch in return. I still have a really good hand. Sure. Here he is. So here what I want to do is play Flooded Strand, and then I want to crack Polluted Delta. This will allow me to play a true name around days. Um, if they have a Red Blast, I have that covered with Force of Will. If they want to force a will it, uh, I can fight back if needed. And that's good because this is just, they're just going to stare at each other pretty much. This allows me to future protect Narset and Teferi if needed. Okay, and that's also a very big reason why I didn't play these. First and foremost, this has no targets that are, this has no targets that are good. Uh, if I use this, let's see, they have one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, they'll be able to kill that, only get one activation out of it. And even if I played one of these, they could easily spell pierce that. So uh, it's playing around their soft permission to make it much weaker. Oh, uh, this is perfect. Sure, we have an answer for that. And this gets even better. Okay, so they played this, okay? This is the fact that they have to delve in order. Well, they don't have to delve, but it just makes their life easier. Uh, that's awesome because we're about to have a really good turn, assuming we get to do what we want to do. Ooh, there's a good draw. Okay, so there's a lot of things you can do, but they have a, a big board, and we want to take care of that. So... Uh, first thing, what I want to do here is play planes, okay? And then my goal is to play Teferi and protect it with any force of will. The fact of the matter is that if I get Teferi down, I can bounce this guy, which means it's going to take them a really long time to get back into play. And with the open planes, what I can do is plow this and they can't do anything about it, seeing that they can't respond to this. So first, what I want to do is play my planes. Next, it's very important when I tap with this because if I do Plains, Plains, Island, when I go to plow this guy, I have to crack this. I don't want to do that. I want to save this for, say, a Brainstorm or maybe a Ponder where I just want the top card and shuffle the rest. So here what I'm going to do is Island, Island, or Plains, Island, Island. There we go. 
Okay. And that's exactly what I was talking about before. Like, remember I said there was the, the turn previously, like I could have gone with Narset or uh, Teferi, that just would have been spell pierced. But by extending the game like this, now they're obviously, they're pitching it to it, but it's still playing around it where uh, they got a good use out of it, I guess, if they're pitching a card to it. But if we didn't just get one for one because of it, but we want to fight over this because the uh, the game plan that we have, assuming they don't have a Veil of Summer, no Veil of Summer? Guess not. Anyway, this is perfect. So now what we can do, bounce this doofus, right? <laughs> Draw a card. Plow this now. I want to plow this now because if they do it in the upkeep with the trigger, they can fetch if they don't want the card. So I didn't want to give them the opportunity to pretty much, you know, shuffle away a bad card. And given the fact that I have a ponder, I can play it now. Um, they can't do anything with days, but I figure since this is protected next turn, I can just take it up and play a ponder like the end of their turn or in response to something, say like a brainstorm. Okay, and that was an interesting card. Um, I was like, okay, because right at the moment, I feel like I am definitely advantaged, but uh, sure, this is probably a better card if you play at a particular time, but uh, I definitely think I am the one who is ahead, but that's fine. Apparently, they have something else to go along with it. All right, and that's cool. So once again, that's just like... The value that I got out of that turn previously was just so monumental. Once all the fighting over Teferi was done, I got to bounce the guy that they're going to have a really hard time playing. I drew a card out of it, and then these exchanged netting me up a card plus tempo. I mean... So Teferi has pretty much, just from a few games, has done way more than I expected it to. It's pretty much as awesome as I thought it would be. I just never got around to buying it because I didn't feel like it, but I finally uh, bit the bullet. Yep, let's do that. All right, cool. Let's attack first. So given the fact that they played a Winter Orb, we are now the beatdown. We have the better creature. This isn't going to be hitting Threshold anytime soon, and now we can play a Stoneforge, which is good. So what I want to do here is play Valk and then fetch for planes here. Okay, because what I want to do, normally uh, in this scenario it might be different. If I tap this and I, this and this, like they can't wasteland anything, which means I'm going to have a land up. However, usually in a scenario that's going to be the, the option you want to make, but it's different in this because if they draw wasteland and they wasteland this, that means they're also on one less mana. But if I keep this up and they wasteland it, that means it could take two turns to bring in uh, the batter skull. You know what I mean? Because I need two mana to do that. So I wanted to make sure I have all the mana open possible that I can't get wastelanded like this. Let's get batter skull. So next turn, I'm going to untap a planes, and then I'll be good to uh, bring in Batter Skull as long as they, well, they can't bolt it now, but. For example, like, if I kept this untapped and they had a Wasteland in their hand, and I was them, I would Wasteland that 100%, because now all of my mana is tapped. Now I pretty much have to draw a card, a land, and then untap one in order to bring it in. So let's untap the planes. And we drew an island anyway. Okay, that's fine. To attack with true name. Playing Narset wasn't something I was looking to do. Obviously, I want to get Batter Skull in. I could have pondered. Um, I don't. Did I ponder? I don't think I pondered here. No. I think having mana open is a little bit more scary. Sure. I don't have the little scoreboard here, so I can't tell if they uh, put those in the top or bottom. But uh, whatever it is. Now we're going to be bringing in Batter Skull. Planes. <laughs> and we get a card that costs a plane. So uh, here what I'm going to be doing is attacking with everything. Like I said, I am the beatdown. So this needs seven cards. They have one, two, three, four, five. And then they would have to play two is instants just to be able to make this a 3-3, three, three, just to be able to block this. I'm willing to take the chance because I want to do as much damage as possible. So I'm attacking with everyone here. I might have pondered here, but I don't think I did. Okay, yeah, once again, I'm just keeping my mana open. Okay, this card that everyone talks about that they hate so much. 
What do you got, Oko? Sure. I mean, that's not even that big of a deal. Now we have a 3-3. Three, three. Sure. You got four life. What do you got? Okay, we knew about that. Now you're completely tapped out. That's great. We still have true name. Island? Although it wouldn't be that bad to, uh, what's the word? Untap a plane, should I draw a council's judgment? Uh, if I do that, I would just, you know, kill this guy and then attack with everyone and win. Uh, but either way, uh, I believe eventually I did ponder, but I might have attacked first. Now, when it comes to attacking this guy, we don't need to worry about this because, you know, three to six, they can make a food token, but that means they need to untap and have a land. But once they do that, that means it's going to take two more turns probably in order for them to gain life. So right now we're just going for the throat. The question is, do we want to attack with everyone? And obviously attacking this person. So true name's attacking him. Then I thought about both of these. So if both of these attack, okay, uh, Hooting Mandrills is probably going to block this and kill it. And then Nimble Mongoose might, you know, uh, block or not. Um, so I'm, I'm not really willing to take that trade. So what would happen? This would get through. They would go to one. Uh, this would die. And then this would die. So it would be two and one. Uh, given that math and kind of factoring out what they would be blocking with, I just attacked with true name. Like I was thinking about it. I didn't. I was kind of quickly going through with the combat math. I think having more bodies in the board is better. Here I did decide to ponder. I'm looking for any type of force, any type of protection. All right, this isn't that bad at all. I also didn't want to uh, swords this. By swordsing it, I give him four life, and I don't want to do that. First and foremost, I already have a swords, so I don't want that. Engineered explosives is going to be great. We know they're going to be gaining life if they need to, but they're going to be tapping two if they do that. Then when they go to create another one, I can use this to actually kill their uh, stupid food token. So anyway, swords on the bottom, then engineered because I'm not playing it now. And I want to keep spell snare in my hand just in case they play something that costs two because uh, you never know. <clears throat> and even if they do cost, cast something that costs two, uh, it has to pretty much kill true name. Because right now they need to be worried about uh, gaining life. Okay, and they can do that now, except that. Okay. Sure. And then they quit because <laughs> they realized uh, they couldn't do anything. They had to get rid of their, uh, they had to crack their Misty in order to get the food token. And then that was that. And they had disconnected. They lost. They left. Anyway, that was a pretty fun game where you saw just what Teferi can do. I mean, that wasn't even um, probably the best that Teferi can do. But that was a very big change in momentum in between bouncing this guy, drawing a card, being able to swords Delver without them interacting. And once again, oh, yet again, we find another way to deal with this guy. I was a little too late for them, but either way, I don't think this card is challenging as a lot of people make it. This card only sucks like if you're on a hand that's very slow and it has like no counter spells in it. That's what happened in that uh, Yorian deck where I had like a lot of land. I had no permission. Uh, and they just pretty much played this and kept, you know, creating stuff. Sometimes that happens, but not that often, especially when you have Blade, you have a lot of pierces, you have Force of Wills, uh, Force of Negation. Sometimes True Name can run it over. You got Council's Judgment. There's a lot of ways to deal with that. And then, of course, you have Red Blast when you go to the sideboard. I didn't even use Red Blast in this, uh, and it still worked very well. So that was one of the games that I won out of many when it comes to the new 75 of Stoneblade. Thank you for watching, as always, and have an awesome day.